Welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla, and this is my baby Phoebe. Can you say hi, Phoebe? <laughs> She's my little four-year-old chihuahua. She's very, very spoiled. And when I came in here to sit down, she was like, uh, hold me, Mama, hold me. <laughs> so she just likes to come and say hi and get a little bit of attention. And then I can put her down and she'll run get in her puppy bed and take a nappy while Mama videos, right? Right, girl? Oh, she's such a sweet dear. Very, very spoiled. Very spoiled. She thinks it's all about her. <laughs> all right, baby. I don't want you to snag up my shirt. So, can you go get in your puppy bed? Yeah? No? What? All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> and she's off. <laughs> she just likes that little bit of attention. And then she's able to go get in her puppy bed <laughs> well guys we have made it to april the first it's a long time getting here <laughs> i feel like february no i feel like january lasted forever like i didn't think january was ever gonna get finished february went by pretty quickly i was crushing on that sweetheart blanket it went by pretty quickly march um you know, I had a lot going on in March. I had that surgery, recovering from it. And so, um, I, I just I struggled <laughs> all through March. I was just struggling. <laughs> just to be perfectly honest with you. And now we've made it to April. And I hope I'm turning the corner and can get back on track and, you know, do the things that I have planned. I have lots of things planned for April. But when you're chronically ill... Plans don't always come into action. Sometimes they just stay in your mind. <laughs> but it is April, and I want to say happy birthday to everyone who has a birthday in April. I was really shocked at how many birthdays you guys and your family members have in April. So, it is my birthday month. Tomorrow, April the 2nd, is actually my birthday. But... I just decided we're just going to celebrate all month and we're going to make a, <laughs> make a birthday project that is going to last all month. So anyway, um, now my birthday is not that big a deal. Really, it's not. <laughs> there's been years where we ain't done nothing. Nobody even said anything, you know. Then there's been years that we had a little party and had fun. So it's not that I really don't expect anything, you know. Um, going on for my birthday <laughs> it is what it is and I'm a grown woman so I'm you know not like a little kid expecting big birthday plans or anything like that um I did throw out a hint for Dakota to make me a Dolly Parton <laughs> cake I bought the cake plate and gave it to me <laughs> now he ain't said anything else about it on his channel gone with the whisk he did say he thought that plate was a gift, but turns out it was a not-so-subtle hit that his mom wanted a Dolly Parton cake. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he's making one or not. <laughs> he might not. He's been really busy at work. They've been really busy and swamped with the Easter holiday and all that kind of stuff, you know, getting out. And they have lots of weddings. Good grief, they have a lot of weddings. And then he has to deliver these cakes and set them up and finish them up and stuff. So, um, he is so tired when he gets off work because he's on his feet running around that bakery, you know, cooking and baking and decorating all day long. Like, he never is not busy. <laughs> so, he's really tired in the evenings when he gets off. But anyway, um, I am drinking some salted caramel cookie coffee. This is, um, I still have a few of those pods left from the box, the assortment box that Lisa sent me from Amazon. Um, I believe it's called Two Rivers, the um, box is. It's just an assortment of all kinds of cook, um, cookies. <laughs> It's an assortment of all kinds of coffee. And this one happens to be salted caramel cookie. And so, here we go. I 
I definitely taste the caramel. It tastes like caramel cookie, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> it tastes really good. So, thank you, Lisa. I enjoyed those throughout the month of March, and I still have I still have some over here left. So I'll be enjoying them throughout this month too. <laughs> So, my plans for April is I'm going to make a blanket. A birthday blanket is what I'm calling it. Now, in February, I made a sweetheart blanket. And so, this is basically the same thing as what I'm doing here. Except I picked up... Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. Excuse me. I picked out colors for my birthday. <laughs> I'm just being silly. So the colors I picked out were from Joann's. And I did show these on a video. Joann's haul. A few weeks ago. I picked the prettiest colors I had in the store. <laughs> I have six colors here. I have uh, pink. Orange. Yellow. Green. Blue. And purple. And I'm going to tell you about them real quick. In case you didn't see that video. But I just wanted to show those. And this little box right here came from Dollar Tree, one dollar. You just pop it open. It has a little cardboard thing you put in the bottom. Stick your yarn in it. When you finish with that project, to put your yarn away, take that little cardboard thing out, and this just folds up flat. So very handy to have. And I have these. <laughs> I have some of these. <laughs> They're very handy to have. Okay, so my top color is this pink. This is a red heart, pretty in pink. Now, the colors I showed in a few weeks ago, the pink is a little different. When I went back, and I, I had bought those colors. I had bought all these colors. And then I just, I couldn't wait. I couldn't stand having these pretty colors and not using them. And I started using them. <laughs> So, I had to go back to Joann's and rebuy the colors. They didn't have that pink, but I did find this pink. So, this is Pretty in Pink, Red Heart. The next one is Orange, and it is a Big Twist Orange Bright. So, that's the next color. The third color is Big Twist uh, varsity yellow. And then the next color is slime big twist. The whole, this whole blanket is made around this color. <laughs> like this is the color that caught my eye and I had to buy yarns to go with it. This blue is cyan, C-Y-A-N, cyan. It's Big Twist. And then this last one is a Big Twist Lilac. Isn't that Lilac? Yes. Big Twist Lilac. And the, the thing was off in the store, so I had to take... I just took that up front with me when I checked out. But anyway, that is the colors that I'm using for my birthday blanket. Now, um... Oh. So, I'm going to tell you all about my blanket and what I'm doing. And if you want to join in and make a blanket also, you are more than welcome. If you, you know, have other projects you're working on and you just want to work on those projects while we chat and visit, that is perfectly fine. If you are diamond painting, if you are doing anything other than crochet, that's perfectly fine too. I don't care if you're folding your laundry or washing your dishes or whatever. I'm happy to be here to keep you company while you work on things that you need to work on. And I'm happy that you're here with me keeping me company while I am crocheting. That sweetheart blanket I did in um, February, I just mainly crocheted on that while I was visiting with you guys. Sometimes I would finish up the color um, after the video, but mainly that video was created an, an hour a day with you guys. And it grew and grew and grew and grew until it is a nice size blanket. So that's what I'm hoping for for my birthday blanket also. So what I have done so far, 
Now, I'm making a rectangle granny blanket, but I'm making it a little different from a normal granny blanket. Okay, so this is the first part of my blanket. And we're going to go to my desk, and I'm going to outline this in white. I have my purple, blue, my green, my yellow, orange, and pink. Now, I'm going to outline this in white. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make three of these. In tomorrow's video, I will have two more of these, and I will show you how I'm turning these three squares, granny squares, into a granny rectangle blanket. <laughs> so I'm going to leave some links in the description box below of how to crochet a granny square and a couple more links also there. <laughs> So, come join me at my desk, and I will outline this in white, and we will visit some. And I'll tell you more about this month, and plans for this month, and just ideas running rapid in my head. I mean, you would think there's some racehorses running around in here with all these ideas. <laughs> so, let's go to my desk. Thank you for joining me at my desk, friends. So I'm going to put a white border on this while we chat. And so one thing I did forget to mention is that I'm using white as my um, neutral color to go with this. When I do blankets like this, um, you know, I pick my colors and then I pick a neutral color such as gray, black, white, brown. Something that will just tie it all together and can be used as a joining or as... Um, you know, just a break every now and then in the blanket or whatever. But I'm using white as my color. So I have my square here made. And like I said, there will be links in the description box below this video here on YouTube. And so I will leave some links there about how to make a granny square. And a couple of ways to make a rectangle granny blanket. So anyway, I'm just going to join in here, join my yarn. I'm going to a corner and just join my yarn. People do this so many different ways. Some people make a slip knot. Some people just um, do it the way I'm doing it. Who knows? It's your preference. There's no right way or wrong way to do it. Whatever you choose to do. And so, that's a great thing about crocheting. There is no right way or wrong way. You do it the way that you learn to do it. Or the way that's comfortable for you. And I'm not going to try to change the way you crochet. You do it ever how you want to do it. It's your project. <laughs> so, I'm using a 6 millimeter hook on my blanket. I always use a 6 millimeter on blankets because that's what I like um, for the drapiness and the feel of the blanket. I've used other hooks before, but I really prefer the look and feel of a 6 millimeter hook. The drapiness that it gives blankets. Um, I learned that pretty quickly on in my crochet journey uh, that I liked, you know, my blankets to be drapey and I just feel when I use a smaller hook, the blanket ends up being stiff and not as, um, I don't know, it just doesn't feel quite as cozy to me. But that's my preference. You might like your blanket made with a smaller hook and there's nothing wrong with that. That's just your, your preference. So, feel free to use whatever size hook you want to use, is what I'm trying to say. You might think this hook is way too big. <laughs> and it might be for some people. I'm going to get a sip of my yummy coffee before it gets too cool. Oh, yes. Very delicious. Very delicious. <laughs> So yeah, I'm putting this border on, and so what I'm going to ask you to do this month is to leave me a question in the comments here on YouTube, and I will try to answer your questions in tomorrow's video. So while I'm crocheting today, 
and just chatting. If a question pops in your mind, just add it in the comments here on YouTube. And when I start to record for tomorrow's video, I will look through there for any questions and jot those down. And then um, while I'm crocheting on my blanket tomorrow, I will be answering your questions. So, anyway, um, yeah, leave your questions here on YouTube in the comment section. If you leave the questions anywhere else, I most likely will not see. I read YouTube, Phoebe, it's okay, baby, a truck turned around and she thinks somebody's here. <laughs> Um, if you leave comments anywhere else, I most likely will not see them. I do read YouTube comments, but I'm not all over the web. <laughs> I'm not about social media and doing all those things, so I'm not, I'm not checking messages and stuff anywhere else. I can just tell you that. I barely can hold the phone in my hand, okay? <laughs> And this question and answer thing works really good for me because um, you might guess that I have typing difficulties. And that's okay. I mean, I'm not looking for a way to learn to type, okay? Because I am i don't enjoy typing, to be honest, anyway. <laughs> so, I'm not trying to find a way to type. Um, and I just have so much going on. To be looking for messages in other places just is, um, I just, that doesn't work for me. So, leave your comments in the, in the YouTube comment section. YouTube is so generous with that comment section. <laughs> Let's use it. <laughs> so, ask me questions and I will answer them. And, um, so this month I'm, you know, going to be crocheting on this blanket and so tonight, or today, what I'm going to do is crochet two more of these squares. So I'm starting my blanket with three granny squares. And I'm going to turn that into a rectangle granny blanket. So anyway, if you want to join along with me, that would be awesome. If you just want to work on your own project, that's awesome too. Just, um... Just tune in and let's visit every day. I'm catching, what I'm doing is catching that little piece right there. So, let me try to not get that piece. <laughs> yeah. Phoebe, nobody's here, baby. She'll, she'll think about that truck all day now. <laughs> until somebody, something else happens. <laughs> Oh. oh, sorry about that. Get a sip of this yummy coffee. It is delish. That coffee is. All the pods in that cup, in that box of assorted coffees have been really good. Now, keep in mind, I did not try the pumpkin because I already know I don't like pumpkin. And I did not try the coconut one because I'm allergic to coconut. But other than that, all the ones I have, take you know, tried have been very yummy. And there has not been any duplicates in the box. They have all been new every time that I tried one. I, I do like trying the different flavors and such because sometimes you don't know what you like until you try it and you don't want to buy a whole box of some flavor and then, you know, then find out, oh, I don't even like that. <laughs> um, I, there was one that's a cinnamon. It was a cinnamon coffee and I think I've seen another cinnamon in there. It was called Sinful Cinnamon, um, but it's a different brand and different flavor, I guess. I can't remember what the other one that I had was called. And it was even good. And I'm not a cinnamon type girl. Like I don't I don't really like a lot of cinnamon flavoring. 
But even that one was really good. So what are your plans for April? Do you have something going on? Anything special happening? I know there was lots of birthdays in April. I was surprised to see that. How many birthdays there are and how many, um, you know, people have even family members and such with April. Our family um, had a lot of April birthdays also. I'm going to try to find a photo of me when I turned three years old on my birthday and share that picture with y'all tomorrow and tell y'all a little funny story about that. I remember it like it was yesterday, honestly. So, I'm going to share that with y'all tomorrow. I like this white. It kind of, it really does pop around that. So, I do like this white. And if you're, you know, new here and just tuning in, I will tell you that I'm crocheting much slower than I used to. And it's a little painful for me to be crocheting this slow. But um, I had another finger amputation in March, March the 1st, actually. So it's been just about a month ago. Ugh, I lost all those threads. <laughs> I had this finger right here amputated due to Reynolds, and so I've had to relearn how to crochet using what fingers I have left. So, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It's slow. <laughs> Painfully slow at times, but it's getting done. Um, sometimes my yarn just splits. It's not the yarn. It's me. <laughs> it's me. But, um, it just takes, you know, a little bit to get it through. And sometimes I'm just not pulling it just right and I'll, I'll slip off my hook and I'll, I'll lose a lot of the threads. Oh, so anyway, what do I have going on in April? Well, um, like I said, I'm turning 53 tomorrow. And then, um, I have doctor's appointments this this month. I have I have one this Friday where I'll be going to Shreveport to um, have my pain pump medication adjusted. And let's see, I have a, I'll be I'll do that twice this month, two weeks apart. And then I have an appointment with my rheumatologist here in town. Sometime this month, about mid-month. Oh, I'm going to get to go back to the crochet club. Remember, I went probably about... I'm going to say I probably went in October. And then Big Daddy's truck broke down, so he had to take my car. He had to take over my car for a while. And so I didn't get to go in November... And then in December, I had had surgery with the pain pump placement and didn't get to go. And and then I just, January, I don't know, I, I don't guess I had a vehicle. Um, <laughs> in February, I didn't have a vehicle either because Big Daddy was still using my car. But in February, we were able to get him a little car. And so, now I have wheels again. I get to go to the crochet club. And I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be on the 9th of April. So, it's next Tuesday, I believe. Possibly. I did write it down on my calendar. But, um, I, I can't wait to go back to that. And just let them little ladies know that I, you know, was wanting to come. I just didn't have a way and... Had things going on that kept me from coming. But I, I'm back now. So I will be going every month to that. Every month that I can. 
So I'm excited about that. Let's see. I don't. I don't. Oh, and then at the end of April, we are going to go to Hot Springs to visit my son Elijah. My son, our son. <laughs> I always say that. I'll say like my my son, and, and Big Daddy will say our son. I'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Or sometimes I'll say, hey, put this in my bedroom, and he'll say our bedroom. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll say something about, I mean, sometimes I'll even say, like, um, my house, or, or let's go back to my house, or something like that, and he'll be like, our house, and I'm like, oh, yes, that's right, that's right, you do live there, too. <laughs> I don't mean anything by it, it just comes out of my mouth as saying, our, my, but anyway, um, but we plan on going to see Elijah in Hot Springs. He work, he lives in Hot Springs, kind of on the outskirts of Hot Springs, maybe closer to the Little Rock area. But it's just on the outskirts of Hot Springs because he actually works in Little Rock. Oh, Phoebe, the male lady, is here, so... She's just going to throw my packages out the window and keep going. <laughs> so I'll have to go and get them. But anyway, so we're going to go up there and visit him. Now it's going to be a really quick turnaround trip. Because our son Dakota wants to go with us. And he gets off work on Saturdays at 4 o'clock. And so he'll need to go home, probably shower. Um, he has to have a shower after everything he does. And um, and then we'll get on the road, tend our you know, tend to animals and all that, and then get on the road and leave, you know, and we're gonna get up there, see see Elijah. Um you know, get a hotel room, go out to eat, just visit with Elijah and stuff. And then Sunday, that's a Saturday night, and then Sunday we will get up and just do whatever we can with Elijah that day. Spend the whole day with him, visiting, hanging out, you know, he wants sightseeing or whatever he wants to show us. I don't care what he shows us. I don't care if we go sit and stare at a mud hole. It's just as long as, you know, I get to be with him and visit with him. And then we'll uh, come back home late that evening. And then Big Daddy has to go to work Monday morning. So we're only going to be gone for one night. And we're just leaving our animals. You know, cats can tend to their self. And so we're just... And dog, one dog can too. <laughs> so we're just leaving our animals, um, you know, with plenty of food and water and pee pads out for Phoebe, which she's having to use a lot more here lately because I can't let her out at night or in the mornings before it's daylight and I can go out there with her because we have a bobcat hanging around. I don't have to, I'll tell you that story. But anyway, so we're, we'll have to get on back. We can only be gone one night away from our animals. And um, I am going to leave a key outside hidden somewhere just in case, you know, there's a, something happens and we don't get back home. Someone can come and tend to the animals. But about the bobcat. So the other night, my little buddy Zeke's mom had came down to visit me. This was, I think, about last Monday. She came down to visit me, and we were sitting here visiting, and right here is a shelf. Right here above my pinky, there's a shelf, and then it's, um, my computer screens are up there, and the middle screen is security camera screen and so right now there's four screens on that one screen and so it just shows all of my yard and such and so 
I sit here during the day and at night when I'm sitting here, I watch animals out there. In the morning time, there's two little squirrels that just run around and play, and I laugh at them chasing each other. At night, there is possums, <laughs> deer. Oh, um, there's a huge, huge rabbit, like a hare. I mean, it is a humongous rabbit that's out here hopping around in the uh, mornings and in the evenings. And so I, I love watching these animals. We do throw out deer corn for um, the deer and different animals. The birds come and eat it. And, you know, so we throw that out in the front yard. And then they come and eat and stuff. So we were sitting here and I didn't see this part until we re did a rewind. But next thing i notice is that there's this humongous bobcat came walking up and sat down right in front of the house like right here by the front door and i was just like oh my gosh that's that's a bobcat and um zeke's mom was like oh it is and you know we were talking about how big it was and it just sat there for a minute it just sat down and was looking around and I was just like, oh my gosh, what's it doing? It was a really big bobcat. Well, then it finally went on. I mean, it, it went and hid in the grass. It went and hid in some tall grass for a little bit. But every time it looked towards the house, you know, its eyes would light up and shine. So eventually it did went on, it went on to the road from what we could see because it was dark after a little ways out in the yard, it's dark and you can't really see where it went. But um, then we looked on the playback of the videos and that big old rabbit that I watched is hopped by as fast as that sucker could go and the bobcat was looking for it. So I, the bobcat couldn't see which direction that rabbit went in. And so, my rabbit was safe for that night. <laughs> so anyway, there's a huge bobcat hanging around out here. And the other morning, it I could hear this screeching sound that sounded like a cat in pain. It was a horrible sound. And so, I told Big Daddy and he said, oh, that's a bobcat in heat. He said, look that sound up. And so I looked up some, and a couple of them didn't sound like it, but one I did find one that did. But yeah, it it was a, a very loud screeching sound. It sounded like a cat in some pain. And so, you know, Big Daddy said it was a bobcat in heat sound. So there's a bobcat hanging around out here. So saying all that, telling that whole story to say, I'm not letting Phoebe out at night. I, I have in the bathroom. I put down pee pads for her. So she can use it. Because um, I'm just, you know, I'm not putting her out, out the door. Unless I can go out there with her. And I don't particularly want to go stand out there at night either. <laughs> so during the day, I stand on the doorstep. While she runs and does her business. But at night, I'm just like, Phoebe, use the pee pad in the bathroom. And she knows what that pee pad is. She knows what that means. So she'll use the pee pad. Except sometimes, her front feet are on the pee pad, but her back feet are not. And Big Daddy does not like that. <laughs> but she's trying, okay? She's trying. But yeah, sometimes her back feet aren't on the pee pad like she thinks they are. And her front feet are and she thinks she's on it. Poor baby. <laughs> oh, my yarn's trying to split. I think I saved it. But anyway. But we live in the Washita Wildlife Management Area, the WMA. It is a huge, huge amount of acreage here. 
of, you know, just woods. People hunt here. Um, they have to hunt legally because there's a wildlife um, station diagonally from my home. Like, say, this is my house. Here's the wildlife station right here. And so I can kind of see them through some trees right here. And their shopping all right here. So I can see all that on my cameras. And um, so they're out here every day riding around, doing whatever it is they do. And they check hunting license and all that kind of stuff. So, And there's check-in stations for going hunting and all that. So, anyway, to saying, we are in the woods. <laughs> we are definitely in the woods. Lots going on out here. Lots of wildlife. Um, we have bear out here and alligators and bobcats, deer. I can't even think of what all, but yes, we have lots. Oh, we have hogs. There are some little boars out here that sometimes when you're riding through the WMA, they might run out of the woods and run along beside you. So we do have a lot going on out here. So I am very careful with Phoebe. Like, I watch her. I usually go stand on the doorsteps. Or if it's a nice, you know, day, I'll go sit in a chair out there and let her lay in the sun for a little while. Um... I can't I can't really get in the sun too much with lupus. But I'll um you know get somewhere shady and try to let her lay out in the sun cuz she likes to do that. And plus I know it's good for her to get sun. It's good for all of us to get sun if you can, but um since I can't, and my vitamin D was very low, so that's why I had to go on a vitamin D. I like the way that white looks on this. It looks very pretty. Very pretty. What do you guys think? And if you are making granny squares to, you know, make a blanket with me, tell me what colors you're using or post it in the Facebook group, um, Llama Mama Kayla and Big Daddy. There's probably a link to it in the description box below. I tell you what, there's lots of, lots of links under this video in the description box. There's links to the Facebook page. There's links to my Instagram there is links to my son Dakota's YouTube channel, Gone with the Whisk. Um, there's links that help my channel if you click on them and use those links. I'm trying to think what all is under there. I don't even know. <laughs> but there's always links down there. So if you're looking for our Facebook page, that's where the group, it's not a page, it's a group. Now you might find some Llama Mama Kayla page out there or another something else out there that I don't even know how to get to anymore. I don't even know the, I get, sometimes I'll get a notification that I have a message somewhere. I can't check that. I don't even know the password to go check that. Um... And it was made so long ago, I don't even know what email it's with or anything. But sometimes I do get notifications for that. But I, I don't have a way to check it. And like I said, I just... If I'm, if I'm busy doing all that kind of stuff, I can't crochet. And I need to crochet more than I need to be on social media. Oh, I have to I have to take breaks and just rest my fingers. Even the fingers that aren't there, I have to rest them. And so what I do is like right now, see I can move those fingers right here. And so what I'm doing is 
I'm flexing them up like this. And so I just flex those fingers up to stretch them. Kind of stretching these ligaments in here and such. Muscles and ligaments and all. I will say this looks a lot better. It's still a little a little poofy here. Even after a month. I can see that that's a little bit bigger. It looks bruised. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. But that is a, still pretty puffy there. But it healed up so good. I mean, it did. It healed perfect. I got my stitches out about two weeks after the surgery, I think it was. And it healed so well, so well. All my fingers healed really good. I didn't have any kind of healing issue with any of these amputations. So, you're probably wondering about that pinky. <laughs> I'm trying to ignore that pinky. <laughs> it has been giving me a lot of problems and issues, but I, I don't know. I worry about it, but I try not to think about it too much. Um, it, it isn't excruciating pain. It's just enough pain to let me know that, hey, there might be something going on here. But it may not be, you know, it may not be bad, okay? So I'm just trying to, you know, hope and pray for the best. But I, I do have some issues going on with that pinky. I'm just not sure exactly what the issues are. I am on all the medications, trust me. Trust me, after this many years of dealing with this, we've tried it all. I know people want to help and suggest things, and that's okay. That's okay, but just know that we've, we've most likely already tried that. Um, what the deal is, is um, my blood ends up... My veins, it starts with my veins, are very, very tiny, and they're thin, and they just collapse. That's the problem. My veins collapse. When the doctor amputated this last finger, he said those veins are so tiny and so thin that the blood just can't blood flow through them. They just collapse and the blood just can't flow through them. And so if the vein's not open, it doesn't matter what medication you're on, the blood's not going to flow through it. Like I'm on Viagra and all the stuff that, you know, you would think that a person needs to be on. But veins have to be open to, and mine are so thin and delicate. So, anyway. Oh, and my, my home health nurse came the other day and she wanted to take my blood sugar. Well, guess where she wanted to poke? You know, my fingers. I was like, no, no, we're not doing that. We're not. And I said, you know, I'm not trying to be rude or ugly or difficult, but I do not want any poking on the fingers I have left because it could cause an ulcer. It could cause issues in there. And I really do think that when I was in the hospital with this finger, they were checking my blood sugar repeatedly over and over. And so, um, I believe that that's where it came from. I, I do believe that. Because that finger started hurting and I started having issues with that finger. But, um, and plus, taking my blood sugar in my fingers is not, it does not do anything. Because the blood has been sitting there so long because it can't flow that it doesn't give accurate readings. When I was in the hospital in December, uh, the nurse come in and she took my blood sugar and it was 16. And I'm just laying there awake talking. <laughs> she ran out of the room. She's hollering and screaming. I don't even know what all to all the other nurses. Doctors came running in that was not even my doctor. Okay. Like doctors I've never even seen before came running in. 
she runs and gets this humongous syringe of glucose and I have a port in my chest. She <laughs> was up on top of that bed with me. <laughs> and she jabbed that in my port and was putting glucose in me. And so <laughs> uh it it was it was something. And they finally got my blood sugar back up. Well, she had to end up taking it from my port. When the blood is sitting in my fingers, they don't get an accurate reading. And so, it's no good to take blood, blood, you know, take blood from my fingers for a blood sugar test. So, anyway, I was telling her that, no, you know, we're not going to poke my fingers. And this is why. And she's just looking at me like... I'm making that mess up or something. <laughs> I'm just like, you can put in an order to my doctor. I've talked to him about that. And he said, do not let anyone poke your fingers. Because that could cause you more issues. And I said, yeah, you're welcome to call him. Whatever. And so she said, yeah, I'm going to put in some orders. Where you need to get a Dex Dexcon thing for you know diabetic diabetics have the i'm not diabetic i'm not diabetic <sighs> but now they want me to have this dexcon thing like on the back of my arm or whatever it's just this little this little plastic thing it has a needle on the back side of it and you just stick it in your arm and it takes your blood sugar you have this little cell phone thing um, kind of like my port has a little cell phone. And it would take your blood sugar, like, I don't know, all, you know, repeatedly. I don't know how often all that works, but I don't know that I need that. But she's going to, she was going to put in orders to talk to my doctor about it. So, I could possibly get, be getting that as if I don't have enough, right? I have a lot going on health-wise, you know, I have scleroderma, crest, C-R-E-S-T, if you ever want to look that up and see what it's about. It's um, actually a multitude of things. <laughs> the C-R-E-S-T all stand for something. And I have lupus, sojourns, obviously Raynaud's, um, Addison's disease. And and my face, I, although I haven't had a flare up in a while, I've had trigeminal neuralgia. That mess is painful. Let me just tell you, that mess will make you lose your mind. Um. So I have a I have a whole list of things going on. The scleroderma has hardened my esophagus, so I cannot swallow. Like food, I can eat ice cream sometimes, sometimes mashed potatoes, applesauce, sometimes like grits or oatmeal. It all just depends on if my esophagus wants to take it. Some days I cannot even drink water. Water will not go down. And the days that water don't go down, well, guess what else doesn't go down? Saliva. So your mouth is continuously making saliva, but some days mine don't go down. And so, those are really bad days for me. So, I have a feeding tube on the left side of my stomach and my abdomen. On the right side of my abdomen, I have a pain pump. And the, my chest on the right side, I have a portacath. So, um, yeah, I have a lot going on. And now she wants to add this Dexcon thing. <sighs> so they can monitor my blood sugar. So we'll see. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm not thrilled about that. I really, I really do not want that. So I probably like. I have an appointment with that doctor later this month. I'll probably talk to him about that and find out, you know, why is this necessary? Like, don't I have enough going on? 
truthfully don't I have enough <laughs> and so Big Daddy tries his best I mean he does but he has his own health issues he is diabetic by the way <laughs> He has his own healthy issues and a lot of things going on. His knees are trick knees. They bend backwards. So he can't he can't just stand up a lot and walk around a lot because his knees um, give out on him and bend backwards. And there's he's got bone on bone. There's no cushion in there. So I can even hear his knees popping and the bones grinding on bone. Um, yeah, I know some people suggest, well, he needs to get out and walk every day. Well, when you're bone on bone grinding, you don't want to do that to yourself. Plus, he falls down a lot. He falls down all the time. Um, because his knees bend backwards and give out on him. So... There we go. Okay, so I'm going to tell you something about me. Now, you do you, do you and I'm going to do me. <laughs> That's the great thing about crocheting. You do it your way, and it doesn't matter how somebody else is doing theirs. So, on the back of mine, I, I don't weave in all these. I want to know that mine is secure, and I'm just picky about that, and that's just me being picky, okay? But also, I'm not one that's trying to, like, produce something that looks like it was, um, you know, professionally made. I like the homemade look. And so that's what I'm going for, is homemade. So I just kind of weave my tail in, just grabbing the very tops of stitches. And I just weave in until I get to... Um, you know, an area and pull it through. And I just tie mine together. Now, I know that there are ways that you can do weave things in. And even when I'm t joining in another yarn, I just tie mine together. I know there's that invisible join. I've done that before. Um, but I don't, I don't feel the need to do all that. I like this look. Because um, I've done that with each color. And it kind of just blends in after a while. And you don't even see this. So I just tie mine together. And I usually tie it like probably about two to three times. Maybe even sometimes four. Just depends on if I feel like it's secured well enough or not. Trying to get that where I can wrap it around this thumb and pull it tight. And then I just snip mine. Like some people would probably weave these in. And that's that is perfectly great. Fine. I just snip mine. And I leave a little bit there. So it's not too close to the knot. Uh, the others I probably didn't leave that much yarn. But that's what I do. That's what I do. And there. So by tomorrow we need to have three of these. <laughs> I do anyway. I need to have three of these, two more of these done so we can, for tomorrow's video, so we can connect these together. And I thank you so much for joining me. I'm so glad that you're here. I enjoy you all so very much. And I just appreciate you. You are my reasoning for getting out of the bed every day, okay? Today was a hard day for me. If you, you know, watched the clean with me video and then the um it was on friday and then on saturday we went to the, the thrift store video which we actually did on friday after the cleaning now when i was doing that cleaning video it looks like i'm just zipping around here cleaning that's not the truth <laughs> that is clips put together and it was sped up because it was going to be a super super long video so i did speed all that up so that um you know, it was just faster. The video was quicker than it could have been, than it would have been if I had not. It would have been about two hours long. <laughs> but I was taking lots of breaks. Like, I would wipe something, and I would sit down, drink something, catch my breath, and then I would do another clip, sit down. I mean, 
it was a struggle. It was. Thankfully, I did have Zeke here as my hands and feet, you know, like, okay, go put this such and such or run this out to the garbage or, you know, run, go put this somewhere. You know, he is so much help for me like that. I appreciate him so very much. Um, and I could not have done it without him. I would still be trying to get one room done. <laughs> But then afterwards, we went to, we went uptown, took him to lunch, and we went to the bakery in South Dakota and got a treat, and then we went to Frog's Flea Market, and I, I made a video walking through there, so if you want to check out the videos from this Friday and Saturday, that's what those videos were, and then we, um came home and by the time we came home I was doing voiceover to get that clean with me video put together and all that yeah I was just I was just in tears I was hurting so bad <laughs> I got that video put together and I did the voiceover in that I don't know how many times and it would not work out it kept disappearing I was so frustrated that I just put music at the end of that. It had like talking music, talking music, and it was just music because I kept losing the voiceovers and it was aggravating and I was just hurting so bad. I was ready to throw that phone. <laughs> Normally I'm dropping the phone, but that day I was ready to throw it. <laughs> and so... We, um, and then sat, and then I put the video together that later that night I went to bed, and then when I got up, I put the video together for the flea market walkthrough, and I was able to do a voiceover for all that, and then, so Saturday, I was in the bed all day long, hurting, lots of pain, I mean, I paid for that Friday, <laughs> I paid dearly for it, and honestly, I feel like I'm still paying for it, Sunday was a rough day also, and then this morning, it took me forever to get out of the bed, I kept waking up, and just, I just couldn't do it, you know, you do have days like that, where you just don't know if you're going to make it if you don't know if you're going to get out of the bed so i'm still struggling and paying for friday i enjoyed friday tremendously but that's the way it is you play you pay <laughs> when you have chronic illness you know what i'm talking about <coughs> oh my goodness <coughs> I swallowed that and it went down wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, guys, so I just want to say that I appreciate you all being here. Some days you're the reason why I get out of bed, okay? I thank you so very much. And remember, it is a beautiful day to crochet. And I will see you all in tomorrow's video. And all month long. Because we are making a birthday blanket. Or at least I am. I know some people said they will be joining in. And I'm excited about that. Um, but, you know, feel free to just work on any project while we're chatting. And having a good time. Don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section below. And I'll see you all in the next video, friends. Bye, guys. Love you all.